Nearly five years since Fortnite's release, the popular free battle royale game is still going strong. However, after a legal dispute with Epic Games in 2020, Apple took the game down from its store. Since then, Fortnite has been officially unavailable for Mac. So what can you do as a Mac owner if you still want to play Fortnite in 2020? As it turns out, there are several ways you can play the game, and in this video, we'll quickly go over them. There are two main ways not only for Fortnite, but any unsupported game on Mac. The first one involves the use of cloud gaming services. In short, you stream the game from a remote gaming rig. The advantage is that your Mac's hardware is irrelevant, so you'll be able to play even the most demanding games with no performance loss. The disadvantage is that the speed and stability of your internet connection become the main driving points. Depending on how good these are, you may have an amazing or terrible time with streaming services. Emulating Windows This approach will get you closer to the native experience, but it requires more time and effort to set up. Also, it'll make use of your hardware, so depending on your Mac model, Fortnite may not run at all, and your battery will probably be drained quite quickly. On the flip side, Fortnite has low system requirements, and you're not locked into specific settings like when streaming, meaning you can tweak them to your liking. So now that you have an overview, it's time to dive into the specifics of each method. Boostroid has introduced tons of new AAA titles to its library, many of which cannot be found anywhere else. Fortnite has been available there for quite some time now. All you need to do is create a Boostroid account, go to your profile, and choose a subscription plan. Then search for the game, open its page, and click play. Like other cloud gaming platforms, Boostroid will ask for confirmation before connecting to your Epic Games account. Click OK Let's Go, and soon you'll see an Epic Games login screen. Enter your details to access your Epic Games account and wait for Fortnite to load within the same browser page. You may want to enter the full screen mode and also hide the toolbar at the top so nothing distracts you from the game. With Boosteroid, the frames per second are locked at 60, while the resolution is at 1080p. This should be fine for most gamers. My internet connection isn't great at the moment, so a built-in feature decreases the amount of data input to maintain smooth gameplay as much as possible. One thing to note here is that in theory, playing the game through a browser rather than an app would result in additional package loss, leading to lag. Personally, I haven't found any issues, but it's still something to keep in mind. Boosteroid seems to be optimized for Google Chrome and Opera, and works very well with them. It can still work with, say, Safari, but the experience wouldn't be nearly as smooth. Specifically for this game, we have had the best experience using Boosteroid. As a performance is mostly influenced by the internet speed, we recommend testing the connection before committing to the service. To test it yourself, you can find a link below the video. Moving to GeForce Now. NVIDIA's GeForce Now is likely the most popular cloud gaming service. It features tons of games and also has a free but limited plan. To use GeForce Now to play Fortnite, you need to go to the GeForce Now page on NVIDIA's site, get an account, and pick a preferred plan. We'll leave links in the description below. Then enter your account, go to the GeForce Now tab, open the Download Apps section and get the Mac version of GeForce Now client. Once you install the client app, log in and search for Fortnite. Hover over the game title or click on it, select Play and click Connect. This will connect your Epic Games account to GeForce Now. Next, search for Fortnite and click on Play. If you're using a free GeForce Now account, you'll most likely need to wait for a while in a queue until a gaming rig frees up. Once a gaming rig gets assigned to you, Fortnite will start GeForce Now client, which will automatically enter full screen mode. It's worth mentioning that free GeForce Now accounts have their game sessions limited to one hour. After that, the user would need to wait in a queue again in order to reconnect. Here's the screenshot rundown of the GeForce Now plans, how much they cost, and what they give in return. Like Boosteroid, GeForce Now has an optional function that would kick into play if your internet connection starts acting up. The feature would temporarily lower the resolution of the game in order to decrease the data usage to keep your gameplay smooth. In my experience, this feature doesn't provide any serious improvements when I start having connection issues. But then again, the lag spikes I'm getting with this current internet connection are pretty bad, making it difficult for GeForce Now to compensate for any of them with this feature turned on. On to Xbox Cloud Gaming. Out of the three gaming methods shown here, this is the most finicky one. In theory, setting it up should be very easy. You just create a Microsoft account, sign in onto the Xbox site, go to Fortnite's page, and click play. However, there are several noteworthy factors that could make it a bit tricky. First, you need to have a controller connected to your Mac. 
Xbox gaming only supports console control schemes, so if you're used to playing Fortnite using a keyboard and a mouse, the Xbox cloud gaming experience would likely fail odd at first. This issue for PC gamers is mitigated to an extent by the Google Chrome extension that allows you to play xCloud with your keyboard and mouse. Without the need of a controller, the catch is that it won't actually give you the desktop controls you likely want. Instead, it translates the keyboard and mouse inputs to control button presses and analog stick movements. This can be confusing to anyone who isn't used to playing with the controller. It also doesn't help that the default key mappings are all over the place, so you need to spend a good deal of time rearranging them. To save some effort, you can see here one possible way to rearrange the key bindings for mouse and keyboard. We also recommend going to the Fortnite's control settings and turning up the x-axis sensitivity to 100% as this would make aiming smooth and more reliable. However, a fair warning, even once I optimized the key bindings with the sensitivity settings, the experience was still quite janky and the movement and aiming felt inconsistent. So using the Chrome extension certainly isn't the smoothest way of playing Fortnite through xCloud. For this reason, we recommend the xCloud option only if you already have a controller for your Mac. In the video description, you can find a detailed guide for playing Fortnite on Mac, where we've listed some of the best Mac compatible controllers for gaming. The main advantage of this method is that it's totally free. Xbox Cloud Gaming requires a paid subscription for its other games, but not for Fortnite. Also, unlike GeForce Now, xCloud doesn't require you to wait in a queue and it doesn't put a limit on the gaming sessions. As for the actual gameplay and performance, you once again have a 60 FPS and 1080 limit. xCloud 2 lowers the resolution in order to decrease the data usage, and thus maintain smooth performance in case of internet lag spikes. That said, if you're used to a standard keyboard and mouse setup, playing through xCloud with a Chrome extension would invariably feel weird. On the other hand, if you have a controller that you can connect to your Mac, the gameplay would be pretty much the same as it would through an Xbox console. Getting Windows on your Mac The other main approach towards playing Fortnite on Mac is to run the game within a Windows environment. One way to achieve this is to install Windows 10 in a separate partition using Apple's proprietary Bootcamp Assistant app. This, however, is exclusive to Intel Macs. The other option is to use Parallels to create a Windows virtual machine within your Mac OS. The advantage of these methods is that your internet isn't as crucial as with cloud gaming. However, you still need a decent internet for Fortnite, since after all, it's a fast-paced online game, so it's next to impossible with a bad internet connection. The Bootcamp Method This is likely the best-known method of playing unsupported games like Fortnite on a Mac. Bootcamp basically allows you to turn your Mac into a Windows PC when booting it from a Windows partition. There are several downsides to this. The first one is that setting everything up requires tons of free storage on your Mac, preferably at least 100 gigabytes. Another issue is that this method only works for Intel Macs. The third problem is, on weaker and older Macs, playing Fortnite through Bootcamp tends to cause overheating problems and trigger CPU throttling, which leads to performance loss and may even cause the game to crash. Despite all that, this is still a viable method, mainly due to being less impacted by internet lag spikes. To use it, you need to get a Windows 10 ISO file from Microsoft, load the file into the Bootcamp Assistant app in your Utilities folder, give enough space to both partitions, and launch the installation. I recommend giving the Windows partition at least 80 gigs and leaving at least 20 for the Mac OS partition. From there, you just need to follow the installation prompts to get Windows 10 on your Mac. We have an in-depth video guide on the entire process, which we've linked in the description below. Once Windows is on your Mac, we recommend manually updating your GPU driver. After that, you can download and play Fortnite as if you're doing it on a Windows PC. The performance largely depends on the hardware specs of your Mac. In the video, I'm using an older 2016 MacBook Pro, so I'm forced to play the game at very low settings to keep the CPU from running too hot and to prevent overheating of the CPU. On newer Intel Macs, you'd usually be able to get away with running Fortnite at higher FPS, since the game isn't particularly demanding. Something to be noted here. If you want to use lower resolution in the game in order to improve performance, first you need to change the resolution of your display. While in full screen mode, Fortnite locks its resolution to that of the system, so it cannot be changed through the game settings. All in all, if your internet isn't the best, but you have enough storage in your Intel Mac, the bootcamp method is a good option. Parallels. With Parallels, rather than installing Windows in a separate partition on your Mac, you will create a Windows Virtual Machine. Creating a Parallels Virtual Machine is easy. You download and install the app, launch it, and then click the Install Windows option. Then follow the prompts to create the VM. Once the Virtual Machine has been installed, open it. Download the Epic Games Launcher, 
use it to install Fortnite and start the game. Parallels Virtual Machine should allow both Intel and M1 Mac users to play Fortnite. However, in testing, we discovered that this method doesn't work on M1 Macs. We got an incompatibility error caused by the ARM64 architecture of the chip. On the other hand, on an Intel Mac, we managed to get the game running. In the case of our 2016 MacBook Pro, the machine is struggling to run Fortnite and as a result is constantly overheating. For older and weaker Macs, we recommend cloud gaming options or the bootcamp method. And so, this concludes our overview of the different methods of playing Fortnite on a Mac computer. Hopefully, one of the suggested options would allow you to have fun with the game on your Mac. If you liked this video and found it helpful, we'd appreciate if you leave a like or a comment below. Also, if you want to see more interesting Apple-related content, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell. It helps us greatly and allows us to keep making more videos.